Oh my god. Oh, he, he wasted the power punch? I'm on you right now, bro. Ah, uh, yeah, bees, 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 bees. Oh. Oh! Dude, the damage, man. Like, he just, oh. he just w got wasted. <laughs> oh, okay. Go, 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 go. I'm in the back line. Go, go. I'm in the back. 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 Zera is one of the best Pokemon for rank due to its high damage and mobility. So without further ado, let's get started with the build. First off, let's talk about the skill set I use for Zera. At level 6, I unlock the Roll Switch for mobility. This ability is extremely versatile and gives Zera a good engage option and escape option. Next is the Discharge, which is unlocked at level 8. This ability does insane amount of damage and it's the reason why Zera is so strong. You can win any fights extremely easy because of the massive AoE it provides. Now I'll go further in depth about the skill and teach you guys some tips and tricks. Alright, so the Volt Switch allows Zera to dash forward damaging all enemies hit. You can activate it a second time to teleport back to the original location, dealing the same damage again. Ghost Switch also increases Zero's basic attack speed for a short duration. So here's how you want to use Ghost Switch when the enemy is further away from you. You simply just dash on them, and then you take it back. Now I'll show you how to use Ghost Switch when the enemy is next to you. You simply just tap Ghost Switch fight really quickly to get the attack speed and continue to fight the enemy. A small trick you can do with Volt Switch is to use the Volt Switch then immediately recall. And right before your Volt Switch ends, immediately take it back and you'll get a massive heal and you'll be right there for the objective. Now let's talk about Discharge. This ability allows the Aurora to deal AoE damage to enemies 7 times and the final hit deals extra damage. If the enemy is affected by your boosted attack, the final hit of Discharge will pull in the enemy and stun them. So let's talk about how to use these two skills together. Both Switch and Discharge allows you to soak the enemy before fighting against them. Essentially, you can choose and pick your fight. All you do is both Switch in, then Discharge, and if the fight doesn't look good, you just simply both Switch back, rinse, and repeat. Here's a trick you can do with the Volt Switch and Discharge combo. First, prepare your boosted attack, and then Volt Switch in to apply the Paralyze effect while using Discharge. Finally, take your Discharge back right as you get the final hit of Discharge to pull the enemy back along with you. Alright, now you know what each skill does, let's go over the item build. I run the same item for Zero no matter which lane I play. First, it's the Muscle Band. This item provides attack and attack speed, which makes Zero do more consistent damage and heal more. It also opens up a very viable option to solo objectives like Dreadnought and Rotom. I've tried a lot of other damage items like Razor Claw and Scope Lens, but Muscle Band is the best. Second, it's the Focus Band. This item provides defense and special defense to make Zera a bit more tanky in the early skirmishes. It also provides a lot of healing, essentially making Zera unkillable in a 1v1 situation. Focus Band is just too consistent and very necessary for an aggressive playstyle. Finally, it's the Buddy Barrier. This item provides a lot of HP to make Zera even more tankier. The 40% bonus shield when using Unite is game changing in later team fights. There really isn't any reason not to use Buddy Barrier because it's one of the best items in the game. Zera has a lot of base damage, so it's best to build for survivability so you can continue to heal and do damage. As for the battle item, the best option is the full heal. 
This item will make sure you can always get off your combo and escape safely without getting crowd control. Now I'll show you a game of my Zera in the central lane and going over how to play it. Let's get started! Alright, at the beginning of the game, it's pretty simple. Just get your slash and go over the wall to kill the lily pup. Zera is extremely strong in the jungle due to having a couple of muscle band early so you can clear your camp very quickly. Try to use your slash whenever the buff spawns so you can cancel their ability as to not get hit by them. Here I'm just gonna path towards top side because ganking top is much easier than ganking bottom due to being able to sneak into the brush much easier. Once again, use your slash to cancel the buff's ability so you don't get hit by them. Now that I see the enemy top is playing very aggressive, I can get this crab, get level 5, and then go straight for the gank. Managed to pick up one kill very quickly, and now it's just a level 3 greedent, so I know that if I just push him off, I will have a chance to score here. The enemy level 5 Sylveon showed up, so right now we just have to go for the bees, and hopefully try to get as much as possible. Just remember, when you're playing jungle, all you're doing is just going top of the beast. If the opportunity presents itself where the enemy is playing very aggressive, then you can punish. But majority of your time, you just want to be there, grab the bees, and then hit straight down for your camps again. I usually like recalling immediately just because I can go straight to my buffs and it will spawn right then and there for me to get to level 7 faster. Zero's power spike hits at level 6 and level 8. It's a little bit more different than the other junglers who hits at level 5 and level 7, but it's no issue because if you do a full clear and you get a score down early, then getting to level 8 is pretty easy. So now I'm just gonna do a full clear, try to find some crabs in a river, whichever. Anything I can get would be good here, because as soon as I hit level 8, that's my strongest power spike for the early game, and practically nobody can fight you. Here I'm just gonna run in to get a quick score because I noticed that the enemy is extremely distracted. Now I hit level 8, unlock my discharge, and just walk in and kill these two right here. So how I like to play Zera in the solo queue is I usually gank top one time just so I, my top laner doesn't fall too far behind and if they are self-sufficient enough, they can get the Rotom and then I immediately use my second gank to gank bottom and this bot lane has been going really well for us Unfortunately, the enemy is all gathering now, but that's okay because I'm just stalling for time until my teammates rotate and then we can potentially get the Dreadnought. Most games, you won't be able to get level 10 before Dreadnought unless you're super far ahead. You get multiple scores, multiple kills. But in this situation, I just need one camp to get level, nine, level 10 so I can unlock my Unite. Fortunately, the enemy team started the Dread, so we just have to go in and contest. Okay, I'm just gonna both switch past their team, go in, grab the Aldino for level 10, Immediately use my ult for the buddy barrier and just kill off two. A Greninja is soloing the Dreadnought, which is great. We got the Dread. Now we can look for a dive. Once you unlock your Discharge and your Volt Switch and you know that you're high level, don't have to be afraid of anything. Just go in with your Discharge. This Discharge does provide a shield. Here I just walk downward to dodge the Venusaur's Solar Beam. Easy live. Run back into the jungle now. I noticed that our top laner got the Rotom as well, so that buys us a lot of time to just go back into farming the jungle. Remember all your camp spawns a minute as you clear them. So as soon as you clear them, you only have one minute to make plays, and then you have to go back to your jungle to kill the camps so it can respawn again. Now it's just a farming game as no objective is alive, you just go around whichever the play is happening, you just go and help your teammates. If you're not close by, then that's okay. Just grab all the camps that you see. Here that I see that the enemy is heavily prioritizing the bottom, but 
Instead of going for the defense, I know that they're just gonna get the score anyways, then I'm not be able to reach in time, so I'm just gonna go for the counter score. Here I managed to get two quick kill. Unfortunately, my Unite barely came up as I died. Otherwise, that was would have been a three kill, and the enemy would not be able to get any catch-up XP from killing me. But it's okay though, I mean, we are super far ahead at this point. So me dying there was a little bit unfortunate to give the XP to Venusaur, but we have our Unite now, meaning our next play, we have a very high chance of winning it. The Rotom is spawning. Just notice that the Rotom and the Dreadnought timers are desync, meaning right now the Rotom spawns first. If it spawns first, we can just kill it first and then go straight down for the Dread. There I see that my teammates are fighting, so I'm just gonna both switch in, get some poke damage. Unite the Venusaur. It actually took a lot longer to kill him than I anticipated, but that's okay. And now I get a free flank spawn on the enemy. Still beyond United. Don't think I have a chance to kill her here, but that's okay. Grab the bees. Go straight back for the Rotom. Yeah, I'm just dashing in for poke damage. Fortunately though, we managed to secure the objective, so great job team. And now instead of going for the Dreadnought here, the best play is to actually grab your buffs. Because the Dreadnought experience is fixed, meaning throughout every Dreadnought, it only gives you the same experience whether it's the first Dread or the third Dread. But the buff experience, essentially if you get two buffs, that's equivalent to one level. But if you get the Dread, you get about 40-30% of a level. The enemy was contesting the dread, but that's okay, they're chasing my teammates now. I'm just gonna go in, grab some quick kills, and play for our next objective, which will be Dappos. As soon as it hits 330, your job is to just farm as much as possible and save your Unite for the Zap. If you are alive or level 14, level 15 by Zapdos spawn, you are doing very well on Zera. But the most important thing is to have your Unite up. At this point, <laughs> The enemy is walking around looking for skirmish. They should be farming on their side of the map, but that's okay. I'm level 14, he's level 12. Unfortunately, uh, his spark gave him enough of a distance to escape from me. Here I'm looking for a fight, and I got sniped by the Venusaur once again. So both times this game I died to the Venusaur, which is really unfortunate, but there's not much I could've done there, maybe I could've taken my bow switch back a little bit later, but it was well played by the Venusaur to aim it exactly where I was as I was taking my bow switch back. So he kinda just predicted where I was gonna land. Now nothing will spawn. My first goal is to get level 15. I think even with the passive XP, I should be able to just get level 15 here. Enemies playing really aggressive. Fortunately, we were not able to punish the Zera. But I think we get the Venusaur kill here. This is a very big mistake by the Venusaur because he died right when Zapdos spawned. Here I was looking for a back, maybe I can help defend, but I realized that no, I should just stay at the Zapdos pit and just kill whoever here to buy time for my teammates. It was a 1v3 situation and I used my Unite on the Sylveon, getting a lot of damage on her. First thing I had to use her Unite as well. Now I'm just running down whoever I can. You're level 15 on Zera, you should be afraid of nobody because whenever you get your boosted attack, that healing, essentially just make sure you win every single fight. And we got 3 kills immediately and my teammates were smart enough to go for the Zapdos while I was killing the whole entire enemy team. Get a quick kill, just run in and get the score. And that's pretty much how you want to play Zera in the jungle. It's not very difficult just because Zera is a very strong Pokemon by nature. You do a lot of damage. The only bad thing is that you require a level to get to level 8. But once you get to level 8, as long as you're diligent with your buffs and always be there when it spawns in the early game and not mess around too much, going for kills, or chasing, then you should be fine. You should hit your level 8 before the first objective spawn every single game. So now it's just defending. The enemy has no chance to win here just because we got the Zapdos score. We're up by several hundred points. They would have to score 500 points to even have a chance. Here, unfortunately, the Venusaur Solar Beam once again hit me. How much I can do inside the Sludge Bomb? And 
I took my Volt Switch back again. So all three deaths this game was practically on the Venusaur. It was a little lag that happened. I don't know why it does that. It's been happening recently since two patches ago, and I don't really know if anyone else is having the same issue. But Either way, the game should be relatively over at this point. Your first objective for Zera Jungle is usually gank top, second gank, gank bottom, get the Dreadnought for the XP lead, rotate top if the Rotom has a life, if not, go back to your farm, get the buffs, be strong for the next objective spawn, and after the second objective spawn, you just play for Zapdos, get level 14, level 15, and then have your Unite move up, you should be able to just carry every single game. Okay, we got 16 kills. Very good. Alright. Moving on, we're going to be talking about the next game. Let's get started. So this game, we're going to be playing Zera invading the enemy jungle. So this strategy is extremely good against Pokemon on the enemy team that requires level 5 to be strong. So anything from Cinderace, the Ninja, Gengar are good because by doing this, you actually deny them level 5. So they are extremely weak for the bees, meaning they're going to not gonna be able to get to level 7 successfully on the first rotation of the objective. <laughs> so as you can see, it is a Cinderace here, and Cinderace cannot fight Zera. I got level 3 from killing the crap, and then you just go all in on him. The chance of a Cinderace beating a Zera, even if he has the buffs, is extremely low. Same with Cinderace, same with Ghastly. So now that we have killed the Cinderace, we've taken one of the buffs, he's gonna be super far behind now because he will not be able to get the evolution to hit level 5. Meaning, whichever bees he tries to contest will have a very low success rate. So as soon as you finish the invade, you just wanna run back to the lane that has only one person, which is usually top lane, and then you play for the bees. As you can see, our jungler is level 5 here. The enemy jungler cannot be level 5, it's actually impossible. Now we just fight for the bees, easy peasy. The Blissey stepped up a little bit too far, so I'm just gonna go in, get a bunch of damage on her, get the healing. And we're actually able to pick up the Bulbasaur as well, and get the score. So the early game invade is very successful this game. Managed to put the jungler behind, put our jungler ahead, and our bot lane is doing really well as well. As you can see, he just barely hit level 5. Here we try to go for the fight, but I think this fight was also very easy because nobody on the enemy team is coming to help the Cinderace. We kill him. I try to get the buff, but now I realize that the Lucario is here. So whenever the enemy team's laners come and help their jungler, you just have to back out. Because by doing that, their laners are going to be behind just due to the fact that they stop laning to help their jungler. So their jungler is behind, which needs help. Now the laner is behind because they're focusing their attention to help the jungle. Unfortunately, the Lucario leveled up to 5 here and was able to just fight me, but it's okay because my teammates managed to get the kill. And now we are almost prepared for the second rotation of B. So you want, whenever you're not invading, you want to get your timers, which is 850 and 720 for Bs. Blissey stepped up quite heavily here. We're level 6 now, so we're really strong. Unfortunately, we were not able to kill that Blissey. It was very, very unfortunate. And we lost the two camps too to the Giga Drain. But that's okay, we can fight for this bees here. And right now, we're really strong with both level 6. And I'm just gonna go in on them. So don't hesitate to go in on Zera whenever you have your roll switch. Because you can just go in, roll switch back whenever you feel the fight is lost or it's not a favorable fight for you. Managed to get two kills, get the quick score, break the goal. Now we just go and kill the Rotom. Since we are already here, getting the result, this Rotom is uh, fairly easy. We also got the Dread because like I said, the enemy jungler was very behind. Unfortunately here, my Decedui should have hit the Rotom and finished the Rotom with me, but he turned on the Blissey hoping to kill the Blissey. Which was very impossible because Blissey was 4 HP and Rotom was 1 HP, right? So it was very clear to know which one to focus. But it's okay though, we lost the Rotom, we got the Dread, it's not that big of a deal, although it would be nice to get the Rotom. Here I'm just gonna invade, trying to get whatever I can, force the enemy team to pretty much chase us here. We actually went a little bit too aggressive, sometimes when you're playing Zera, you always have need a way to escape, unfortunately I used my whole switch to go in. So this was one of the mistakes of uh, dying, but 
I don't think the enemy can capitalize too much anyways because our Greninja was able to just follow up and defend the top goal. They only got 26 points. But now the invade strategy is pretty much over. You won't have too much opportunity to go into the enemy side of the jungle just because of the map state right now. In order to go into deeper into enemy territory, they can't lane right now. Essentially, they always be next to their base. And I don't know what this, the Sedgwai is doing. He walked up, he died, we get a free kill. Now I'm just pressuring top side and trying to get a quick score here in with the Sedgwai. So the invade strategy is usually good for about the first spawn of the objective, putting behind the enemy jungle so he can't get level 7 to get his final evolution. And then from then on, your first objective is almost secure just because since your jungler can potentially get level 9 and unlock your night move, the chance of the enemy fighting you is very slim. Now we clear the whole entire side of the enemy jungle. We can just wait for dread spawn. Here I'm just gonna fight them just because I can use my Unite here and have it up for the zap though, so pretty easy choice. Here I decided decide to just walk away because my Decentralized is always gonna die there. There's no way he can escape. Fortunately, my team was smart enough to go for the Dread. We got that immediately. Now I'm gonna run top to get the Rotom. So the Invade Zero strategy is you're not really laning anywhere. All you're doing is just going around the map and killing whatever you can. Essentially try to kill the enemy side of the jungle whenever you can just because if they lose their camps, not only do you get a lead, but they lose a lead. My Decedurai managed to redeem himself here by hitting the Rotom. He actually got the last hit on it. I was very impressed by the fact that it was 1 HP and nobody was hitting it except for the Decedurai. So we got a quick, easy Rotom and now it's back to farming. Your goal at this point is to just save your Unite and essentially just wait until you get like level 13, level 14. The Zapdos will spawn at 2 minutes, meaning you have about a minute and 40 seconds at this point. Just go around, just get whatever you can. Trying to get level 13, level 14, you should be strong enough to win any Zapdos fight on Zero. Aura. Here I see if it's happening. Not much I can do, I just have to walk him out whenever I can. I'm sitting on the brush waiting for the Cinderace to show. Use my Unite move here. I still have a good chance to pretty much recharge it. Whenever the 330 mark is generally when you want to start saving, but if you have an opportunity at 330 to use your Unite move for a big fight, then don't hesitate to use it because then you have a minute and 30 seconds to potentially recharge it back. As soon as it hits the 3 minute mark though, using your Unite move, the chance of recharging it back is very slim. So now we're just grabbing whatever we can. The B camp spawns at 250, which is great because we can use that to charge our Unite move. The B camp will spawn and charge your Unite move the fastest because there's 4 units for you to kill. Every time you kill something, you get about 5% of your Unite back. So the Bs essentially will give about 20%. Here we almost reached level 14. Level 14 is a very strong power spike for Zera because you have your Discharge Plus, meaning it will slow the enemy while you're hitting them, meaning they cannot get away. Here we have a small window to go for the Rotom here, and it's a, since we have a Decedrite who does a lot of damage, I think we just barely got it, which is huge. But once you get a third Rotom, the third Rotom actually serves as a sixth person on your team. So you just leave it alone for it to buy pretty much pressure for you and then you run towards the Zapdos pit. You see how the enemy has to send their Venusaur to defend, essentially giving us a chance to start Zapdos. There, we're just doing Zap. I'm gonna go in and try to kill the Cinderace. The Cinderace actually united very early, was not able to get the steal. And even if they get the Zapdos score, the chance of them winning wasn't that high because we could have just easily went and just killed like 2-3 people. And then the Rotom distracting the Venusaur means he won't have a chance to score as well. So there we go. Pretty easy game on the Zera Invade. The whole strategy is just to put the enemy behind, right? So your jungler can get ahead and that will increase your chance of getting the first objective. Alright, we managed to get MVP as an Invade Zera. 
now let's move on to the next game. In this game, we are playing Zero at top against Lucario. We are 5 manning with our teammates, and the enemy team is also a 5 man. So at the start, just get your slash and go and immediately clear two of the monkeys. So whenever you're going against a Lucario, all you do is just run past these two monkeys without your ability and just run straight in to go for the fight. Do not go for the grab, go for the fight first and just keep hitting the Lucario. Here we managed to use a slash to get the monkey and now we're just chasing him down. So Zera can never lose to Lucario because our build essentially is built for the early laning phase. So anyone who tries to fight you will essentially just die to Zera. All the healing and all the extra damage from Muscle Band makes it impossible for any Pokemon in the game to fight you. So you can exert your, exert your dominance and just win the laning phase. So at this point, we pretty much took a lot of the camps and this guy is trying to fight a monkey. He doesn't realize that by walking up here, you were just going to keep smacking him and he can't do anything. So this playstyle is very good against Lucario. If all you're doing is just fighting Lucario, making sure he can't get his attack weight stacks. It is essentially a counter in the, against Lucario in the lane. Now we just fight for the bees. I'm gonna go on to Cinderace because he's by himself. Unfortunately, he lived with 1 HP because our Charmander does not run Eject Bun. I think we managed to get the Lucario kill here at the very least. And test for their monkeys. And now your job is to just get level 6 as soon as possible because that's when you hit your power spike. The thing about Lucario is Lucario becomes strong at level 5, but Zera doesn't get anything at level 5. But if you're at level 5 and he's level 5, you do not want to fight a Lucario. But once you're at level 6, then that's when you start fighting him because the Bolt Switch will help a lot in the 1v1 by giving you the attack speed. So the next objective spawn will be the 720 Bs. Now all we do is just farm and stopping the Lucario from scoring. Notice that the Lucario score is... Uh, pretty high at 15 but unfortunately we misplay a little bit here we gave him a small point but we managed to get the monkeys afterwards and Lucario at this point only gets one attack weight stacks he's really weak at the moment and now we know that we can hit level 7 and potentially level 8 first in this Lucario here I baited his power punch and we were able to do a lot of damage to him grab the free monkey Then the race appeared, I'm going in for some poke damage, managed to kill him very quickly with the Volt Switch. So when you do a Volt Switch really quickly, it actually gets 2 ticks of damage and was able to kill with my auto attack at the very end. Now we get 30. 30 score, huge score. We left the goal at 2 points here. Decided not to break it. So the strategy, the strategy with not breaking the goal here is because as soon as you break the goal, the enemy actually gets a lot of Arduino to spawn on their second goal. So they have a lot of time to farm back up. But if you don't take it and you want to get a bigger overcap like right now, right now even if the Aldino spawned, the enemy can't take the Aldino because they're too busy doing the dread. So now usually my teammates leave me top lane to solo the Rotom because I can do it very quickly while they're contesting for bottom. The reason why we can do this is because Charizard at level 9 is one of the strongest Pokemon in the game. So he can buy a lot of time, if the enemy plays too aggressive, he can just punish. As you can see now, we just, even though it's a 4v5, my teammates managed to get kills. Unfortunately, they dove too deep. I think at this point, I told them to just wait for me, and they went a little bit too deep and ended up dying. But it's okay, because we still got the Rotom, so at this point, it's net neutral. Here, I try to steal with the auto attack, but it was very ambitious just because if I get the auto attack, then yes, I'm a hero, but if I don't, I die, it's fine. But yes, as I was saying, at this point in the game, the objective is net neutral, right? We got the Rotom, the enemy got the Dread, so now it's just back to reset where we just farm whatever we can and wait for the next rotation of buffs. Here, I'm just gonna grab the buffs here and create level 10. So this, and at this point in the game, it's considered free time. You can do whatever you want, but the best and optimal strategy is to just farm whatever you can and look for score if the enemy team is not defending. Here, the Lucario tries to defend against me. I'm just gonna go in. I realize that if I use my Unite here and kill the Lucario, I actually have a chance to score. 
Unfortunately, the Elder Gods can unite him. I'm like, okay, so I traded my unite for two unite. Essentially, it's still a net win. I don't think I have to die here, but I, the power punch actually cancel my buffering on the vote switch. So as you can see, I was spamming it. I just didn't get it off because of the CC from the power punch. Do take note that the Rotom does spawn first because the timer is desync, meaning we got both the objective on different timers. Essentially, we want to go for the second Rotom before the Dread spawn, since that is the only objective that is up right now. And there you can see the power of pretty much just Zero R being able to heavily poke the enemy team. I went in already one time. I tried to win it really hard. Going in here again, didn't really get anything, go back. And once again, I can just go in, look for the fight, and go back. And essentially, you can just keep doing this as long as you have HP and just wait for the cooldowns. Once again, go in, get the kill, and then go back to dodge the Mr. Mime. Now we got the second Rotom. The trick about second Rotom is you almost never want to push the second Rotom because the enemy will always have the Unite move and the Jump Pad. So pushing it is very dangerous. So why we get the Rotom is just to stall time for us and gives us pressure so we can invade the enemy jungle or whatnot. Here I use the Unite move on the Cinderace. The Cinderace also uses the Unite move as well. The thing about Cinderace Unite is it takes much longer to charge than Zero Unite. So now I have I'm guaranteed to charge it back up before Zapdos spawn, but the Cinderace would, is not guaranteed. Unless he gets many B-Camps and many other core fishes or buffs to charge it back up. So that was an excellent trade. Now I'm just pressuring bot side. If the enemy leave the bot side alone, I can actually sneak in a 50 score here. But the goal is to just farm for Zapdos. Trying to get as strong as possible. I'm gonna hit level 13 here just passively. And now I can get the B spawn. Essentially, the Bs will give you about 20% towards your Unite move. You I think I let the Venusaur get it here just because Venusaur at level 13 is one of the strongest Pokemon in the game. I see that he's level 12. The reason why we pick Venusaur is for the Zapdos fight. If you have a Venusaur at Zapdos fight, the chance of you winning Zapdos fight is extremely high because of the AoE that Venusaur provides and the attack damage, plus his Unite is extremely strong when everyone's grouped. Here I see the Decesuri, I'm just gonna go in on him, get the free eject. You almost never at risk of dying as long as your focus band is up. Come back off here, and just recall. Yeah, unfortunately our Venusaur got caught even though we told him to back off, it's just that nothing could have been done here. Now the enemy has priority on the Zapdos, but the, here's how you want to play Zero Aura in the Zapdos fight. You want to flank behind the enemy carry. Look at here, I went behind the, the Sedgeway and the Cinderace, forcing them to run in a really awkward direction, and now just pretty much wipe them. We didn't even need our Venusaur for this fight. This was a 3v5 that I started <laughs> and managed to kill their carries immediately. So when you're playing Zera, don't ever group with your team. You want to be walking around looking for their squishies. Now I'm just zoning the Mr. Mime because he's the only one that can steal, but if I'm on top, on top of him, he cannot steal at all. Managed to secure the Zapdos and pretty much win the game here. A little bit messy in the early game, but it's okay because, like I said, I'm playing Zera. <laughs> as long as I'm playing Zera, enemy Cinderace, enemy Greninja, enemy Decedrui cannot play the game. You should not be allowed to play the game against a Zero or if you pick those kind of Pokemon. Another quick score. I think I ended up dying here, but it's not a big deal. At this point, the enemy team has no chance of winning. They would have to score about 600, 700 points to potentially have a chance to win this game. So there you go. Zero Aura is extremely strong against Lucario in the early game because all you're doing is just fighting him so the Lucario can't get attack weight stacks. A lot of Lucario players are running attack weight, but this kind of playstyle just forces the Forces them to lose a lot of HP and making it really risky for them to walk up and score. In terms of the objective, Zera is extremely strong when he's soloing objective objectives like Rotom or Dreadnought. But don't ever hesitate to start it if you're by yourself. And try to learn how to poke with Zera as well. 
go in, if the fight doesn't look good, then back out with Volt Switch and just keep doing it over and over and over again. That's why Zero is so annoying because you cannot punish that kind of playstyle when there's a Zero with full heal, right? You can try to CC him, he just full heals, and he's still doing exactly what he's doing before. There's no counterplay at all. So, we managed to get a huge score against the enemy here. Very nice. And let's see the stats. We end up getting 190 points, not bad, 8 kills. This was a very high elo game. Alright, that will be the end of the guide. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, then please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. I will continue to make more guides like this, so subscribe for future content. Bye for now.